Well, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, praise God. To many of you that are online with me, praise God. This is the day the Lord has made, and of course, we are rejoicing, and we are glad in it, praise God, for another day to share with you the living word of God. Thank you so much for you that are on today, praise God. Welcome, welcome, welcome this morning to a great day of victory, a great day of, 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 of faith, praise God. You know, the Bible says, no matter what you're going through today, Many of you know you're at lunchtime, some of you on break, praise God, some of you listening to us in the morning time. But when you're listening to this, I want you to know that faith is the victory that overcomes the world. So we're going to uh, start our broadcast today. God bless you, Twyla. I see you on. God bless you, daughter. Amen. Welcome this morning. Faith is the victory. Uh, I'm going to be sharing with you again, uh, you know, Monday through Friday at 11.30 uh, uh, a.m., Pacific Standard Time again, praise God. The title is going to be called Focusing Your Faith. Erica, God bless you, Erica Payne. Welcome today, amen. I want to say, as you all are coming on, go ahead and share it on, on, on live, praise God. Share it with, with the people that you know, because we're looking forward to some great things that God's going to be doing in our midst today, praise God, through this faith is the victory. Because I know many people, you got you got different things going on in your life. Many of you got, you know, different uh, obstacles, you know, sicknesses, diseases. Uh, some of you got family issues in your life. Some of you have, you know, problems with kids, praise God. All different kind of things that's going on in your life and so on. You know, God put in my heart, I'm going to come with you every day, Monday through Friday, to get to get your faith focused. Because sometimes when things happen in our lives, it's very easy to get our faith out of focus and start looking at different things that were going on in our lives that's so very challenging to do. And I've said the same thing so many times. So at the end of this lesson, I'm going to be praying for you. I'm going to be leaving God with you for whatever you're going through. So if you have special requests of prayer, you know, we're going to be praying for those requests at the end today. We're believing God for something supernatural to happen in your life. Something supernatural to happen in your life today. So we believe God with you that no matter what you're going through, that this is the day that your faith get back focus again. And you're going, to, you're going to experience something supernatural in your life, supernatural in your family, supernatural in your business supernatural in your ministry, whatever it is, you'll see God do some great things. God bless you, Kevin, Pastor Kevin down there, praise God, in San Antonio. We were just there in Houston last week, praise God. Bless you, man of God. Welcome, welcome, welcome as always. It's good to have you with us today, praise God. God is doing some great things. God got great things in store in your life. So we're going to look at some things today. I'm going to focus on your faith. You know, my eyeglasses, what my eyeglasses do is they don't, they don't give me focus. They focus what's already there. So sometimes we got to really uh, look at these things and say, oh God, how can I keep myself from, you know, uh, going through issues in my life, getting out of focus? But you say, Dr. Craig, how do I know when I'm out of focus? It's when you, be, you begin to start allowing things and circumstances to begin to dictate the terms of your existence. Are you following me? It's when you begin to start looking at those things instead of looking at what God has said. You know, Peter you know, as long as he was on the boat, and, 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 and he said, Jesus, if this is you, let me come out there with you. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. And so Peter literally, you know, uh, 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 was going to walk on, on the water like Jesus. And you know what Jesus told him? Come on out here, Peter. Get your faith focused, Peter. But then what happened? As soon as Peter got out of that boat, and he began to focus on the winds that was around him, uh, you know, it said beginning to sink. So sometimes it is not the winds that's causing us to sink as we begin to look at the winds. We begin to focus on those winds. We begin to allow those winds to, 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 get, to switch our confession of faith. <laughs> Amen. We begin to allow those different winds to do different things. Lucy, God bless you, daughter. I see you. Welcome. Welcome, Lucy. Been a long time from her from you. A good seeing you also. Praise God. Uh, online with us today. So again, Peter was going. He was doing such a wonderful thing. He was doing great. You know, he was literally, he, Peter was literally walking on the water, literally walking on the water and uh, to go to Jesus, but he began to focus on the winds. See, it is not the winds that determine whether we are victory, victorious or defeated. It is allowing those winds to get us out of focus. The Bible says Peter began to look at the winds, and as he began to look at the winds, he began to say, but thank God. Amen. Jesus, the rescuer, was there. Amen. And Peter began to say, Peter said, Lord, save me. And Jesus, being so faithful, reached out and picked Peter up, and they began to walk on the water again. That lets us know that we can get out of focus sometimes in our faith. 
But if we just say, Lord, all right, I got out of, I got out of focus, Lord. I began to look at the six situations. I began to look at the circumstances. But Lord, <laughs> save me. Restore me back. Get me back in focus again. Where I can focus on your word that told me to come on out here. And I'm, and I'm coming out there because you said it, Lord. And now I'm walking in the water again. So I'm believing, I'm believing God that doing these, these daily sessions, that you're going to get back on, you're going to walk on the water again, amen, every day, maybe something that the Holy Spirit might share, you know, while I'm teaching you on a daily basis, that'll just be sometimes one or two words that'll be enough to get you back in focus again, and walking on the waters of life, walking on your circumstances, instead of walking in your circumstances, amen, praise God, in Jesus' name, so, uh, let's look at our scripture today, if you have your Bibles, or, or, or your, your notepads, where you may have your telephone, how you, have you use your scriptures right now. I want you to look at Hebrews chapter number 11, verse 1. We're going to start that today. That's our foundational scripture that we always use to get us back in the focus again. As we begin to understand all right now, well, how do I know if I'm in faith? Okay, number one, Hebrews 11, 1 says this. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. This is what it says there. But it is the evidence of things not seen. I'm going to say it again. Now faith is, present tense, the substance of what? Things I'm hoping for. But it is also the evidence of things I do not see. That means anytime my evidence is based upon what I'm seeing or what's going on around me or what I'm experiencing or not experiencing, I'm not in faith. Because faith is the evidence of things what? Not seen. And we're going to look at that as we get into the lessons every day about, all right, let's move into the unseen because there are two worlds. As many of you, you know, I, I, I've heard me over the years teach faith. There are two worlds we live in. There's the spiritual world and there's the physical world. You got that? So there's a physical world that can be contacted by my five senses. That's the things that are seen. And there's another world called the world of faith which are things that are just as real, that exist in the same way, but they are not seen. Not seen means they cannot be contacted by my five senses. It does not mean they do not exist. It means there are just some things that, that I cannot contact with my five senses. There's a world that's going on beyond my five senses that is even more real than the one I'm walking in my five senses. But if I'm a moving to faith, it's called it is the substance of things that are not seen. And so sometimes focusing on our faith means getting ourselves out of those things that are seen. Uh, you found which, my, which, which, which is hitting my, me emotionally right now to begin to transition back into the world that is called what? Not seen. You got that? So let's look at our definition today. I want you to look at our definition today. Uh, and, and this is one of my definitions I have. And of course, I encourage you to to go back over this lesson because it's on Facebook. That way you can listen to it over again. You can you can take notes on this. It'd be a great lesson for you and things like that. Uh, this is my definition of faith, okay? And I encourage you to write this down. If you have time to write it down, now read, listen to it again after I get finished today. And then go back and actually write this definition down, okay? Just, re, just refresh your mind in that. You know what I mean? Because sometimes you said, Dr. Craig, I already know that. But sometimes when you rewrite it again and you rewrite it again, it kind of refocuses you again. You got that? So faith this is my this is my definition. Faith means I am confident of what I'm hoping for, convinced of what I do not see. I'm gonna say it again. Faith means I am confident of what I'm hoping for, and I'm now convinced of what I do not see. In other words, I believe that which I have fondly hoped for is at last mine. I've been hoping for it. But now that I'm in faith, I have a confident assurance in my heart that it is mine, even though I don't sit in the physical realm, but I now have evidence in my heart that it is mine. I'm settled. I'm resting in it now. Even though, this is now, even though I do not presently see it in the physical realm, but something is taking place in me that has given me faith for the unseen, where I'm just as confident confident, or even more confident, of now, even though I don't see it, I have a peace, I have a rest in my heart, and in my emotions, that it is mine. 
glory to God, based on the word of God. Abraham came to that point in his life. You know, God spoke to Abraham, you have a child. And at first, both Abraham and Sarah laughed. You know, wait a minute, are you sure? You know, Abraham, 99 years old, Sarah, you know, 90 or whatever, how old she was. And the Bible said that they began to look at their bodies and they began to start saying, wait a minute, there's no way in the world we're going to have a child. I'm 99. I think God first spoke to Abraham was like 90 or something like that. And, and so in the physical realm, it was totally impossible for, for them to have a child. <laughs> you follow me? But, but God had gave him a promise. Abraham, I have made you, not I am making you, I have made you the father of many nations. And so Abraham had to take what God said, even though his physical body and Sarah's physical body, there was no physical evidence of it even happening. Sarah was past the age of having children, but yet they took what God said in his word as their evidence. They took that promise of God's word as their evidence of things not seen. Are you following? Even though, look, the Bible says all hope being gone for it happening, they got a word from God. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes all you need is a word from God. All you need to do is, it may be a scripture you've already known all the, for a whole lot of years, but also the Holy Spirit impregnate with you, that with you again in a whole new, fresh way. You know, even though a mother has had a child before, she can become pregnant again, all things being equal. So I want you to see yourself, even though you've seen some of these scriptures, and maybe you've had some, some miracles from these scriptures, I want you to see yourself totally empty and get impregnated again with, this, with these scriptures afresh in your heart, afresh in your mind. Are you following that today? And this way you're able to, even because, like I said, because a mother goes through the same process every time she has a new baby. She goes through the same process of, 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 of conceiving the child, of uh, incubating that, that child, and bringing the child forth. She, even though she had a baby before, she, each child she had to go through the exact same process. So for what you're going through right now, I may, be, I may cover some of the same things you've heard before. But I want you to see, it's time to get impregnated again, amen, with the word of God to, for, the, for what you're going through right now, what you're suffering right now, the challenges you're facing right now. I want you to get re-impregnated again, you know, for, for the miracle you need in your life, the miracle you need in your family, the miracle you need in your finances, the miracle you need in the health of your body. So, so don't look at these scriptures, oh, I've got, I heard that before. No, no, no. These scriptures, the Bible said the word of God is seed. And you got to kind of reconceive this seed and get pregnant again in the spirit realm with the new miracle that you need from God. And the word is that seed. So, no, so, so I want you to make, pay very close attention to what's being said because this is the, this is the foundation for which God's going to do some mighty things in your life. You got that? So we need to see this then. As you're thinking about, you know, what you believe in God for, you must get, come to the point, number one, that what I need, what I believe in God for, already exists. Because faith is, not was, not will be. Faith is the substance of those things so for, And faith is, present tense, the evidence of things I do not see. So I got to start seeing that what I'm believing God for, what I'm believing God for today already exists. <laughs> Glory to God. It's already, in, it's already packaged for me in heaven. Glory to God. If I'm, it's already packaged for me in heaven. All I got to do now is conceive it. Number one, believe it. Receive it. And carry that thing through in faith. Praise God. Water with my praise. And watch God work in my life. Uh, fresh and anew in Jesus' name. So number one, we said in faith means you're confident of what you're hoping for. Faith means you're convinced of what you do not see. Number two, you got to see this, that faith is your spiritual weapon. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you have facing your life, faith is your spiritual weapon. That's right, Twala. I see it's a new season. That's right, Twala. God's got a brand new season of faith for you, brand new miracles for you right now. <laughs> Amen, in Jesus' name. So this is number point number two. Faith is a spiritual weapon. You, you, you want a weapon? 
Because sometimes we go through things and we start looking at things in the natural realm and that thing gets into my emotions. We begin to start saying, I know I can handle this myself. You, you, can, you can move out of the spirit realm and you can try to handle things in the flesh to get your own track. Now, a few weeks ago, no, a couple months ago rather, I was going through some things, you know what I mean? And I was, you know, I was thinking about how I could do this and do that and that. God said, wait a minute. He said, what you want to have happen in your life right now can only be done in the spiritual realm. You have to handle it in the spiritual realm. Because I find myself trying to think it through, trying to, and nothing wrong with thinking things through, but I find myself trying to work it out in the physical realm. When the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God, through what? The pulling down of strongholds. And what are those strongholds? What are those strongholds? Casting down those imaginations and bringing those thoughts into captivity to obedience to Christ. That's what the fight is going to be. And so my faith gets my mind and my imaginations back focused on the Word of God. And I begin to cast down those imaginations that are not in agreement with what God has said concerning my situation. And I begin to bring those thoughts into captivity and, you know, that are not in line with what the Word of God says. And that is a spiritual battle. <laughs> Glory to God. But look at the Bible says in the book, of, let's go to the book, of, uh, the book of Ephesians for a moment. Chapter number 6 and verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 16. It says this. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. You see what it just said there? You see what it just said? Above all. That means everything that you've been going through. All the things you, you've been trying to make this thing happen. <laughs> you've been trying to change it. And it ain't worked. So God says, above all, now take the shield of faith. It means you use your faith as you would a shield. If someone was coming at you with a knife and you, you got a shield, you put that sh shield up to, to, to counteract the, 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 the darts or what is being thrown at you, you put that shield up. So no, you know, you know, you may be you may be throwing it at me, but it ain't gonna get me because I got a shield. I got a shield. And look what it said you can do with the shield. Bible says you use your faith as you would a shield. It says which which will be able to quench all, not some, all the fiery darts of the wicked one. That means your faith is the key. No matter what darts the devil been showing throwing at you. Your faith is the key to quenching all those fiery darts. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. You know, kind of like, you know, if you uh, if you have a match and you want to put that match out, you kind of you put like a little, a little spit on it and put it in the match. It goes, you quench it. You, you, and it was fire, but then you quench it. It was meant to affect you, but once you quench that thing, are you following me? It has no more power to affect you anymore. So that's why this lesson on faith and focusing on faith could be so important. Because the thing that's been coming against your marriage, the things that's been coming against the health of your family, the things that's been coming against your finances, the, the faith is the key to putting a stop to it. It can quench all the fiery darts. You said, Pastor, you don't know what I've been going through. I mean, oh yeah, coming through COVID and now coming through all the different things happening today in the world. Oh my God, yes, I understand fully, but I've got, you and I have something that God has given us called the shield of faith. No matter what you're going through right now, you can quench all, not some, all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And, uh, and uh, so we decree over your life right now. I decree over your family right now. I decree over the health of your body. I decree over your finances right now that every fiery dart is quenched in Jesus' name. I, I decree that even though you face some things in your in your life that has been real challenging for you and, and it seems like it's gotten out of control, by the word of God, I decree those things stop right now in the name of Jesus. I decree faith-filled words come out of your mouth. And you begin because because the Bible says you know that the, your word your words are a weapon, and I decree that faith filled words come out of your mouth, and you don't talk about the devil, you talk to the devil, and you begin to start saying no Satan, 
I'm taking the shield of faith because God tells me that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me is condemned in Jesus' name. So I'm going to speak. I'm going to use my shield of faith and my mouth being the soul of the spirit. And I'm going to speak not about my situation, but I'm not going to talk to God about my problem. I'm going to talk to Satan because God says, whatever I bind on earth will be bound in heaven. What am I loose on it? Be loose in heaven. And I have the word as my foundation that gives me the faith to be able to speak that and knowing that God is going to bring that to pass in my life. So in the name of Jesus, I speak to you right now. There's a, there's a boldness that rises up on the inside of you called faith in the word of God, knowing that God is with you, knowing that God is for you, and knowing that God is in you. And when you speak that word, just like when Jesus Christ spoke to that storm and said, Peace, be still. I decree that same anointing. I decree that same power. I decree that same anointing is on you right now in the name of Jesus. And just say this with me. Say, say in the name of Jesus. Say it with me right now. Say in the name of Jesus. I take my spiritual authority of the name of Jesus Christ. And I speak to this situation I'm facing right now. The Bible tells me by Jesus Christ I was healed. So I'm claiming now, based on the word of God, I am healed. My family is healed. And every physical condition facing my family is healed in the name of Jesus. So I command every sickness. I command every disease with the faith God has given me to be quenched in my life, to be quenched in my family in the name of Jesus Christ. And I decree over your life right now that financially, glory to God, you're going to quench that fiery dart of poverty and lack, and insufficiency that's trying to keep you from walking in the fullness of the blessing that God has placed upon your life. And now you can speak now to the spirit of poverty over your life. And you can start saying, no, Jesus Christ became poor for me, that me through his power may be made rich. And the Bible said, the blessing of the Lord make it rich and ask no sorrow with it. So I'm, I'm speaking over your life around the blessing of God. <laughs> oh, that God in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that Abraham, amen, was blessed. And the Bible says, because you are the seed of Abraham, you also are blessed with that same blessing. So I need you to begin to claim that by faith. And use your weapon right now. The sword of the spirit. And, and, and the shield of faith. To say, in the, to, say, to say in the name of Jesus, I quench the fiery dart of poverty off of my life. And I decree, or oh, in the name of Jesus, you spirit of poverty. I declare you broken off of my life. I declare you broken off of my finances, off of my family. And I, and I decree that the history of poverty that's been trying to plague my family through history, I speak that it's ended right now. I quench that dart of poverty in the name of Jesus with my faith in the name of Jesus. Because my faith is my spiritual weapon. And so from this day forward, I believe and the thing for which I have spoken come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Are you following that today? Are you following that? God's got something very special for you. He got something he's doing, going to do in your life that's mighty and powerful. Amen. Praise God. And you know, I'm going to come on every, I'm going to come on every day with this and uh, Monday through Friday. And uh, uh, and then I'm you know I'm gonna give you more and more of this, amen. But but I I would like to be able to offer you uh, you uh, I've got a teaching that I did quite a while ago uh, on faith. It's, it's you know it's quite a few you know lessons. I want to offer them free to you, amen. That's right. I want to offer them free to you. I, I I need but I but I need you to do this. I just need you to uh, to email me at uh, Dr. Craig Senior at gmail.com, and I need you to. You request it uh, uh, for from for me. I uh, said, Pastor, please send me your your lessons on faith. I think there's about 10, 10, 10, 12 lessons on faith that I've taught that you can begin to study ahead of this. And when I taught it before, that you can begin to speak this. I want to offer it to you free of charge. But I need what I need you to do. I need you to uh, uh, you know uh, email me your your name, your 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 phone number, your cell number, and your address. And if you'll do that, I will, I'll send you 
uh, the links to it. I'll send you the, the, the YouTube links to it. And then I'll also send you notes that go with it. That you can do an in-depth study. And think. I'll be teaching you some things right now. But at least you'll be able to start. You can go into it yourself. But I just, all I need you to do is just email me. Dr. Craig Sr. at gmail.com. That's Dr. Craig Sr. at gmail.com. And request, Dr. Craig, please send me. I think it's like 9 or 10 videos that I have. With the notes that go with it. And you can begin to study those things on faith. A lot of, well, I'm teaching right now, but, but I'm teaching right now by the Spirit of God. But those things begin to get you back, back energized in faith again. <laughs> and praise God. So again, all you got to do is say, Dr. Craig, please. I'm emailing you, Dr. Craig Senior, gmail.com. I'm going to request the, 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 the videos, the free, free videos on faith. I need your name, your, full, your complete name. I need your address, your physical address, and then I need your your what the your the zip code and everything, and I need your phone number, and I'll get those things right out to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because I, my goal is to focus your faith. Amen. Like one man said, feed your faith and starve your doubts to death in Jesus' name. Also, I want to let you know that I, I'm going to be doing a special uh, three day seminar here in November. I think it's the 16th, the 17th, and 18th. I believe it is. A, I think, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's on Facebook. I, I put it on Facebook. and uh, But uh, three, it's going to be a three-day seminar. And, and, and I'm going to be talking about, you know, some things about really, you know, releasing your full potential for 2023. I'm going to be live in Phoenix, Arizona for three solid days. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, on my, it's on my page right now. I'll probably refresh it for you. But I want you to sign up for that. Because that's going to be, I'm going to do three days of solid teaching of releasing your full potential. Strategies for supernatural success. Three solid days from 10 in the morning until 5 p.m. that day. We're going to be giving you a lunch and going to have lunch and everything. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So re register for that. It's going to be something. It's going to be very popular. Like I said, it's on, it's on Facebook right now. Some of you probably already got the email to it already. But I want to encourage you to do that because sometimes saturation is what you need. Just take a side. You know what I mean? You might take off a couple of your vacation days or whatever you got to do. It's going to be on that. It's a Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I think it's November the 16th, 17th, 18th, or 17th, 18th, 19th, whatever it is. It's, it's on Facebook. But I want you to sign up for that and come. Three solid days of releasing your, your, your unlimited potential, uh, uh, you know, strategies for success for 2023. It will be well worth it for you to come and spend those days with me. I'm going to spend all day just teaching that word of God. It's going to be a great blessing for you. So register for that. It's going to be a great blessing for you. Again, I'll be back on tomorrow at the exact same time. We love you. Also, as we get ready to close today, of course, I'm an apostle. And, 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 and the way, you know, uh, everything that we're doing right now, like you said, even this seminar is free. Everything I do is free. I, I do it by partnership offerings, okay? And that way, no matter who you are, to what you're going through right now, you can be able to participate. But the way I'm able to do that is because of my partners that partner with me in sowing and reaping. So I want to invite you to be my partner in what I'm doing right now so that I can continue to give this out to other people around the world. Amen. My MTI program, these classes, these free videos I'm giving you right now, I do that because of partnership. So I want to encourage you right there on Facebook. There's a, there's a, there's a partnership, and you can, uh, right there you, where it says giving, you can click that link. You can do it by Zelle. You can do it by Cash App. But I want to invite you to partner with me and sow seed into what I'm doing uh, uh, together so that what I'm doing, you can operate by that same grace in your life. So again, we're going to see you tomorrow at the same time. Uh, and until then, this has been Apostle Alfred Craig saying, May God's riches and his very best be yours. See you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye now.